Hello, good day and welcome. I am by name Samuel Babatunde, and today we're going to be looking at mathematics. Mathematics. And the topic we're going to be looking at today is fraction, a very interesting topic, fraction. And you know, fr fraction simply means parts. Fraction simply means parts. Like we know, our numbers that we use today are usually in whole numbers. We refer to them as whole numbers. But you know, it's not possible for you to always represent quantities in whole numbers. Like it's not possible that every quantity is represented as a whole. There are sometimes you need to represent parts of these quantities. And that is why fraction is important. And today we're going to be looking at fraction. We're going to be looking at fractions. Now, like we know our common fractions, it is not always possible to use whole numbers to describe quantities. Like I said, it is not possible that you always describe a quantity as a whole. Like when I mean whole numbers, your whole numbers like one, two, three, all these are whole numbers. But it's not always possible to describe these quantities in whole numbers. There are sometimes we use fraction to describe parts of these quantities. There are sometimes we have to describe what parts of these quantities. You can't only describe these quantities as a whole. And for you to describe them in parts, you use what you call fraction. And that is why we are studying fraction today. Now we write fraction like this. You've heard of one third, two third, three fifths. All these are fraction. All these are fraction. Like the one third simply means one over three. One over three. That is the one third. One third simply means one over three. Take for instance now you have like um, maybe six oranges. And I said you pick the one third of these oranges. Now, this one third is simply represented as what? One over three. Or maybe you have an orange and I said you divide it into three. And I said you pick what one third of it. So you see that this is a fraction. Now, the orange in itself was a whole. But now you've divided this orange into what? Into three. Now, this orange has three parts. One, two, three. Now, one third there simply means what? One over three of that orange. That's what one third simply means. Then when they say two thirds, in thirds, it means what? Two of the parts. Two of the parts of that orange. And that's why we say what? Fraction simply means what? Parts. Fraction simply means parts. Because when you say one third, when you say two thirds, I refer to the what? The parts of a whole. Part of a whole. You have a, you had a whole uh, what, orange, but then you divided it into three. Now when you say one third of that orange, you're meaning what? A part. That's one part of the orange. And that is fraction. Also, if you have something like watermelon that is big and you divide it into five, and then you say three fifths of this watermelon, now what three parts that has been divided is what you are, what you are looking at. So it is a part of the watermelon. And that's why we say it is not always possible to use what whole numbers to describe quantities. There are sometimes you want to describe what the parts of these quantities. There are sometimes you want to talk about the parts, not necessarily the whole of these quantities. Then you need what you need fraction. And that is the aim of today's class. I'm going to be looking at these common fractions and then how the types of these fractions and what they mean. Now, like we have, we have the one third here. And one third simply means what? One over three. One third simply means one over three. Likewise, we have three fifths. And it simply means what? Three over five. Now, we have one up and we have three down. We have three up and we have five down. Now, all these have their name. This one here, is what we call denominator. And this three here, down here, is what we call the denominator. Now we're going to be looking at the meaning. Now we say the number below the line is called the denominator. The number below the line, when you have a fraction, like the one over three here, the number below the line, which is our three, is what? Is the denominator. It is the denominator. And this denominator rep represents what? It shows the number of equal parts the whole number has been divided into. Like take for instance, I give an example, an orange. If you divide this orange into three, and then you are asked to pick what one third of this orange, or pick one part of this orange. Now that means you are asked to pick one over three of this orange. Now you notice that this three, which is below the line, is our denominator. And this three represents what? The number of equal parts to which what this orange has been splitted into, or to which this orange has been divided. That's just a simple meaning. Or the three-fifths of a watermelon. You had a full watermelon, and then you cut this watermelon into five equal parts. Now they are actually to pick what three fifths. That's three over five of this watermelon. Now you see that this five there, which is below the line, is our denominator. But this five actually represents what the number of equal parts the whole orange has been what has been splitted into, or has been divided into. 
So that's just the meaning of denominator. It is a number below the line, which represents the number of equal parts this quantity or this whole part has been divided into. Now, the number above the line, like here now, see the number above the line here is one, and here the number here above the line is three. Now this number above the line is what we call the numerator. We call it the numerator. Number above the line is referred to as the numerator, while the one below the line is referred to as the denominator. Now this numerator just shows the number of parts in the fraction. That is the number of parts we are considering, the number of parts we are, what we are picking. For instance, I told you about the orange. You just divided your whole orange, your full orange into three, and you are asked to pick one third of it. That's one over three of the orange. Remember I told you that the three below is the denominator and it represents the number of equal parts this orange has been divided into. But now the one on top, which is the numerator now, shows the parts that we are considering. It shows the parts what in the fraction. That one there now shows what? It shows the number of parts in that fraction. Remember the orange has been divided into three. But now what? We are considering just one part of this three. And that is what? That is the number known as the numerator. It has to be above because that is the part we are considering. So we are considering one part out of three. And that is why we say what? One third, one over three. Because the part you are considering is the one above the numerator. That's the parts in the fraction. But then the total number of what? Of which this um, orange has been divided into is now the denominator. That's the three. So the denominator simply represents what? The number of equal parts to which this whole has been divided into. While the numerator simply refers to the parts in the fraction. And that is why you have one over three and you have what? Three over five. Now we move to what we call the mixed numbers. The mixed numbers. Now some quantities need whole number and fraction to describe them. There are some quantities that need what whole number. That is, they, they need you to describe them as a whole and with fraction. For instance, three and a half oranges. Take for instance, you have three full oranges and then you now have one that has been divided into two half. Now how do you represent this? You have to represent this with fraction. By saying what three and a half and a half there simply refers, it simply means what one over two. Now, because you have a what before, because you have a whole number and a fraction, we refer to this set of numbers as what mixed numbers. Because what is a combination of a whole number, your three, three is a whole number, you have three oranges, three is a whole number, and then you have half orange, one over two. So now adding these two together will give you what three and a half, and this is a mixed number because it comprises of a whole number and a fraction. And that's why I say the number three and half is written as three and a half. That's three and a half, three whole number, one over two. And it's a mixed number. So a mixed number has a whole number part and a fractional part. Like in the three and a half now, our whole number part is the what is the three because three is a whole number. You have three oranges. Those three are what they are complete. They are a whole number. They are full oranges. Then you now have half orange. That's a fraction. Now, when you add this together, you're having what? A mixed number. So a mixed number just made up of what? A whole number part and a fractional part. So three and a half is a mixed number. And mixed number also includes, you have five and a half, or you have five whole number, two over three. Many, there are many, like you can't even count. Or you have one whole number, two over, um, two over five, like that. So these are examples of what? Mixed number. So mixed number simply means the presence of a whole number part and a fractional part. And I'm giving an example three and a half, I say what, three and a half ranges. So this is a mixed number. Now it is possible to express a mixed number as a single fraction. So like I said, it is possible to express a mixed number as a single fraction, as a single fraction, because you know, mixed number is made up of a whole number and a fraction, a whole number and a fraction. Now you have three and a half, three and a half oranges, three and a half. And then the whole number there is your three. And the half, that's your fraction, is this. So you can express it as what, three plus half. Now for you to convert this three here now into a fraction, that's for you to convert this whole number now into a fraction, you have to multiply this whole number by the denominator of the other one, of the fraction. Now you have the three, which is a whole number, and you have a fraction, one over two. Now to convert this three to a whole number, um, to a fraction, what do you do? You multiply three by the denominator, which is two. Now you have three times two. And then now you introduce a fraction over what? Over two, the denominator also one times two to give you two. Now when you do this, you have what? Three times two to give you six and one times two to give you two. 
Now, this 6 over 2 here is the same thing as what? 3. Because when you carry out 6 over 2, you have what? You have 3. 6 over 2 will give you 3. Now, you successfully what? Express this whole number as a fraction. And now, you now have 6 over 2 plus 1 over 2. Now, you now add what? In fraction. Now, to add this in fraction, what do you do? Since they have a common denominator, you just add directly. Because the denominator is common. They share the same denominator, which is 2. So you just say 6 plus 1, and this will give you what? 7 all over 2. Now what? You successfully what? Expressed a mixed number as a single fraction. Now you, 3 over 2, which is a mixed number, is the same thing as 7 over 2, as a, which is a single fraction. Now when you want to carry out this division yourself, when you do 7 over 2, what will you have? 2 will go into 7 3 times. That's 6. And remaining what? Remainder 1. And so you have what? You have 3 whole number 1 over 2. So 3 whole number 1 over 2 is equivalent to what? 7 over 2, which is a single fraction. Now, denominator of fraction 7 over 2 is greater than the denominator. When you have a numerator greater than what? The denominator. We call this type of fraction an improper fraction. It is not proper. Because normally, a fraction what? Is a part of a whole. A fraction is meant to be a part of a whole. But now when you're having the words, and I told you that the, the denominator always represents what? The total number of which what this whole and this, this substance or this quantity has been divided into. That's the number of parts that's been divided into. And the numerator now represents what? A part of it. So normally, the numerator is supposed to be what? Lower than the denominator. Because we say fraction is a part. But in a case where you have the numerator now larger than the words than the denominator when the numerator is greater than the denominator as in the case of seven over two where seven is your numerator and it is greater than your denominator which is two we call this type of fraction an improper fraction it is not proper but when you have a numerator less than what the denominator we call it a proper fraction that is a proper fraction for instance two over seven now, 7 is the denominator, which is the number of parts this number has been divided. And 2 is now a part of this division. So we call it a proper fraction because fraction simply refers to what's parts of a whole. So we call it a proper fraction. But I see in the case where the word nominator, numerator is greater than the denominator, we say it's an improper fraction. So it is an improper fraction. Now, let's look at examples. Example 1 here says express four whole number. 5 over 6 as an improper fraction. We have to express 4 whole number, 5 over 6, which is a mixed number, to what? To an improper fraction. And remember, improper fraction simply refers to what? The numerator being greater than the denominator. Now, how do we do this? Remember, I told you that a mixed number has two parts, the whole number parts and the fractional parts. Now, the whole number part here is your 4, and the fractional part here is 5 over 6. So, in the fractional part, our numerator is 5 and our denominator is 6. But for us to express this as a proper fraction, we have to convert this 4, as a, which is a whole number, to a fraction. We have to convert 4 to a fraction. Now, how do we do this? For us to convert 4 to a fraction now, we have to multiply 4 by this denominator and also divide it by the denominator. So we have to multiply 4 by the denominator and also divide this by the, what? By the denominator. Now, the denominator is 6. And we want to convert 4 to a fraction how do we do it we say what we multiply 4 by 6 which is the denominator now 4 by 4 multiplied by 6 will give us what we give us 24 we have 24 now then we now divide this again by the denominator now for this 24 divided by 6 has given us what a fraction 24 over 6 is a fraction and even when you calculate this down 24 over 6 will definitely give you what it will give you 4 so you have your 4 back it's the same thing so 4 is equal to what 24 over 6 is the same but we also want to express 4 as a fraction. You see now, you have nothing to lose. 4 is equal to what? 24 over 6. Now, you now see 24 over 6 plus the fraction, which is what? 5 over 6. And since they have the same denominator, you just would add straight. You go straight into addition because the denominator, um, the denominator is what is the same, 6, 6. Now, 24 plus 5 will give us what? 29. And therefore, you have what? 29 over 6. And this 29 over 6 is an improper fraction. Now you've expressed what 4 over 4 whole number 5 over 6 as an improper fraction, which is 
29 over 6. And it's an improper fraction because the numerator is greater than the denominator. If the numerator was to be lower or lesser than the denominator, we say it is a proper fraction.